If you go on to enjoy the video, please consider hitting that like button and subscribing. It does really help me out a lot. And if you're into Funko Pops, I've just started a brand new channel dedicated to them. The link for that can be found in the description. And it beats the random lottery that is FIFA points by buying the coins direct from u7buy.com. Use code TVM at checkout for a 5% discount. Or if you're a new customer, get 8% discount. The link is down below. What is going on guys, Tim here, welcome back to a brand new video and we are going to look at the what if Lucas Leiva, 88 rated, could go to a 90 if Lazio fulfilled the criteria. He's got a high defensive work rate, medium attacking, 3 star, 3 star. Why am I looking at him? Well, I'm a Liverpool fan, I don't like to admit it these days, but I am a Liverpool fan and of course he is a Liverpool icon and he is one of the... Not one of the cheaper what-if cards, but he's one of the cheaper new set of what-if cards, if that makes any sense whatsoever. But with a catalyst on him, he actually turns into a pretty good player, you know. I mean, I, I could easily give him a shadow, I know that, and I'm sure most people would recommend Shadow Anchor or Powerhouse or something along those lines over what I'm going to go for. But the catalyst gives him the pace that I need, 91 acceleration, 85 sprint speed with a catalyst, boosts up that passing and long passing. Is that enough? Would I like a boost in other areas? Yeah, I, I think I would. So maybe the Catalyst isn't the, the chem style to go for. But I didn't really plan on keeping Lucas Leiva. Had a lot of Catalysts lying around and didn't really fancy wasting a Shadow. Even though that does turn him into a 91 rated CDM. That could be the way forward if you're looking to just use him purely as a CDM. Powerhouse wouldn't be terrible. Turns him into a 93 CDM, but you don't get that pace boost. And of course, the Anchor is a very nice middle ground. You get 10 strength, you get a little bit of a pace boost, the defensive stats get boosted nicely. His passing is good enough anyway, in my opinion. You don't really need anything like a powerhouse or a catalyst. It was just, like I said, I had loads of them and I thought I'd just throw it on there. And of course, his composure is really good. So this card on paper, even as an 88 rated, before the potential of going to a 90, is very, very good. So why is he so cheap? Well, the, the reason for me is that he doesn't have natural pace. So 75 sprint speed, 81 acceleration, which has been boosted by 19 and 17 from the original card, which is a massive boost. His shooting's gone up by four, passing's up by six, dribbling's up by five, defending's up by four, and physical is up by 16. His strength has gone up by 24 points to 85. That is quite impressive. Plays in a five, uh, five at the back formation. Three-man midfield, him, Kaká, and Kante. A little bit on the defensive side. Not a massive fan of how defensive that is. In fact, Kante was being replaced uh, by either Grealish or... No, I think it was just Grealish, actually. I think Grealish was coming on for Kante. I like Grealish in this game. I don't know why. I kind of wish he was a what-if card. But um, anyway. Uh, yeah, so is Lucas Leiva good? Should you buy him? It's going to be one of those, yeah, I do actually think he's quite decent, but is he going to be as good as your current DM? Or is he going to be better with the upgrade than your current DM? Th that's obviously down to you to answer, because I don't know who you play at CDM. For me personally, if you're a, a fan of, of Lucas Lever in general, whether it be a fan of one of the clubs he's played for or whatever... This is a card that you'll be happy to use and you will enjoy using. If I'd had him untradeable, I probably would play him in most of my teams. And the reason for that is because he didn't really put a foot wrong. He wasn't outstanding to the point where I'm thinking, wow, he is everywhere. But he did enough to make me think, yeah, okay, he's not bad. And he didn't really put a foot wrong to make me think, oh god, he's the reason why I've conceded. He's this, he's that. I've used plenty of players over the last few weeks that I can point out and say, right, that is the reason why I'm not winning this game. That is the reason why we've conceded that goal. And it's always, that player isn't good enough, he's made a mistake. For example, uh, Bruno Perez, right back, I blame him for nearly everything. Not necessarily his fault at this point, it's a bit of a meme, but at the same time, he made two or three mistakes in two games. And from there on in, I notice every little thing he does wrong. But with the likes of Lucas Leiva, he didn't put a foot wrong. It wasn't anything that I was thinking, right, he should have intercepted that. Or he should have made a challenge and he didn't. Or the ball went through him and it shouldn't have. Obviously, when the ball goes through or the defender goes through your player, even though you've made a perfectly good challenge, there's nothing anyone can really do about it, regardless of the player. But it's definitely worth noting that that didn't happen with Lucas Leiva. 
His long shots are 70. Not very good. His shot power is 82, which isn't terrible. Obviously, the catalyst chem style that we've got on him doesn't affect that at all. So the shot that he had from distance just a second ago wasn't actually that bad, considering he doesn't have very good uh, shooting from distance. Doesn't have any traits to speak of whatsoever which is a shame but has 91 interceptions and that's without a boost if you give him an anchor or shadow or any other defense minded chem style he is going to have even better defending capabilities and he was very good defensively always managed to win the ball back this game was probably one of his best because he managed to win the ball back I, I don't even know, maybe 12, 13 times he made dummy tackles and he won the ball nearly every single time. And then he was capable not only to win the ball back, but to look, wait and play an inch perfect pass every single time. We don't quite get it back there with Pereira, although he does eventually win it back and we, we burst forward and he gets the, the foul. But every time he win the ball back, I could rely on him to look up and look for a pass play it over the top, and there you go, bang, right over the top, perfectly weighted, and Bappe is in and he scores a goal. The defence have got no idea, the goalkeeper can't get it. That game in particular, he was probably responsible for starting three or four of the of the seven goals, maybe even five of the seven goals. He got a couple of assists to his name as well. He was a very, very good player. And and again, he's always, he's, he's got aggression, right? 90 aggression, it's one of those stats that's really underrated. A lot of people don't really know what it is. It's how fast the player will go into the challenge, essentially, without you controlling. It's AI, it's an AI thing, because obviously you can control him and you can move him as fast as you want. But again, he looked another move started by Lever winning the ball back and bang, it's resulted in a goal. And you won't get that with many players. Well, you will get that with a lot of players, but you won't get that consistently with many players. Lucas Lever wins the ball back, able to pick out a pass and bang, all of a sudden you're in. He's not the best player in the game. His sprint speed isn't great. That's why the catalyst exists, and that's why I've put it on him, and that worked quite well. His weak foot is only a three-star, and of course he does only have three-star skills as well, if that's something that bothers you. doesn't bother me for a CDM. I can understand why it would annoy a few people, but for me it was fine. But it is one of those, just beware, because, you know, it's going to annoy some people, I'm sure. I liked him. I'm really looking forward to him getting that upgrade to a 90. Hopefully Lazio can meet the criteria and that he can get boosted to a 90, but... I don't think it's ever going to be one of those that's really expensive. Even if he does go to a 90-rated car, people are going to look at it and go, ah, too slow, don't want it. Honestly, if you can fit him in your team and you're a fan of him in any way, shape, or form, I'd pick him up and give him a go. I really would. He surprised me. He, one of those cards, definitely, that was a much better in-game than his stats suggest and much better than I thought he was going to be. Let me know in the comments, A, have you used Lucas Labour? But also, have you used a card recently that turned out to be fantastic that probably shouldn't be fantastic. You know, one of those cards that's like, oh, wow, he's actually really good. I didn't think he would be this good. Let me know. If you have enjoyed the video, though, hit the like button. It does help me out a lot. Subscribe to the channel for you. And until the next time, goodbye.